is God. We're going through a series and the series is called Closing Seven Doors. Very briefly, the bigger series is giving us the tools to be able to conquer the sinful nature in us and to be able to overcome the devil and the demons out of us. We want to be like Christ. That is God's ultimate goal for each of our lives when he called us. But I want to submit to you that you and I cannot do this in our own strength. We can't defeat the enemy within the sinful nature. We cannot defeat him in our strength. It doesn't work. Neither can we fight an unseen enemy. So it's very clear to everyone that we have not only the presence of the third person, the Trinity, living in us, but he's given us the Lord Jesus Christ to put on to win every single battle of the enemy. We have already closed the gate of prayerlessness. We've closed the gate of allowing wicked thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations, dreams, and visions to dwell in our minds. Today, we want to give you a tool that will close every door of the enemy. Every door. Every single door. Whether it be the mouth gate, the ear gate, the eye gate, the heart gate, the mind gate, you name them. God has given us the most powerful weapon to close that. And that gate is called, or that weapon, sorry, is called the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit closes all doors. Can we say it? The sword of the spirit closes all doors. Father, we come to you. Lord, I need your anointing. Lord, I need, we need your anointing, corporate anointing. Lord, we need the revelation of your word. If you don't reveal this word to us, it's impossible for us to understand. Lord, we need clarity from the Holy Spirit and give us the ability not only to comprehend but to do what you will empower us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. My Bible says in Ephesians 6, 17b Take the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. I want, I want you to look at this very closely. It says the sword of the I have here with me. What is this? What is this? A sword. This sword is used by the army of the Napoleon time and the time of Paul to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. Amen? Amen? I want us to get that distinction. And this sword was used for two things. It is used to thrust your enemy. It's also used to cut your enemy. This side and that side. Praise the Lord. But the sword that we're going to talk about today is the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Say it again. The sword of the spirit. It has three principal things it does. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is one of the major divine weapons to attack the enemy. Satan. It is a very important element 
to chop him off. It's also another important element to defend us. And above all, the sword of the Spirit goes beyond that. It empowers us when we let the word of God come in. Will you say amen? amen. Don't forget these three things. The word of the God, God which we are told uh, is the sword of the Spirit, has three basic functions. You use that word to speak. You use that word to defend yourself. And finally, when you allow the word of God to come into you, it empowers you. Yeah. It emboldens you. Yeah. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Why are we giving the sword of the spirit or the word of God? As a way of introduction, it is to enable us grow in maturity. And the only two things I want you to take away from here is in those days you had to be taught how to use the sword to defeat the enemy. We are taught to defeat the enemy by using the word of God. You are either skilled at it or, or not. Thank you. Thank you. So we want to teach you how to be skilled in using the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you are a baby, you take that sword and you use it as a baby. If I gave this, right? If I gave this to a young man, they would not know. But if you brought somebody who was mature and understands how to use this, they will finish you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Likewise, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, like newborn babies, you must crave the pure spiritual milk so that you will grow. So that you do what? I like that. So that you will grow. You grow spiritually by knowing how to handle the word of God. Okay. If you are new in the Lord, you will stumble over things like all of us stumble. And what shows that you are growing in the Lord? The Bible finishes it. You will grow into a full, not partial, experience of salvation. And if you know of a baby, we have, oh, my granddaughter right there. Hallelujah. What is she seeking for? Everybody? Not food. Seeking for? Thank you. Ah. Give, you, give, give her food, we'll be in trouble, we'll fight with you. Hallelujah. Milk. She craves for milk. If you see somebody who has truly believed, they crave for milk. That's right. That's right. Dr. Harold, when, he, when I baptized him many, many years ago, he craved, he would run, come to, come to the church. He wants to learn. He writes things. Today, he has an independent ministry. That reaches thousands from his house. That's what happens when you and I love God. We'll cry out for nourishment. For skilled people, the book of Hebrews 5.14 tells us they eat solid food. Solid food is for the mature who by constant use how many times have trained themselves. I don't train you. You train yourselves to distinguish good from evil. Hallelujah. When I get into this word, it helps me to distinguish good from evil. And if I can handle this word of God with diligence, with care, with trust, I will be a skilled interpreter, dispenser of the truth of God. Will you say amen? amen? I want us to take one verse and we'll deduce, we'll get four uh, truths from them which will help us today. We are told in the scriptures to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, right. And that is reflected 
in Hebrews 4.12, it is written, Amen. for the word of God, again, is living, first of all, it's what? Living. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. This word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. How come? If I use this sword, I can kill somebody's body. But this sword goes beyond. It goes into four areas. It goes beyond the body. Listen to it. It pierces even to the division of the soul and spirit. Will you say amen? amen. Soul and spirit. And the joints and the marrows, which is your body. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. This sword does not know what I intend in my heart. This one does. You know why? I'll prove to you from the Bible. Why this sword knows does what this one cannot do. It is because this sword is God. That's right. Oh, wow. All right. Let me give you three, three, three examples very quickly. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was so this sword is what? God. The Rima God. Hallelujah. Don't let me start dancing now. Number two. The Bible says in John 1.14, the word became what? Flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father. How did he come? Full of grace and truth. While Moses came with the law, and I thank God we don't live under the old covenant, Jesus came with what? Grace and truth. Truth embodied in one person. My God. Finally, another verse to show you is found in Revelation 19.13. It reads, He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And his name is called the Word of God. When God speaks to you through his word, he speaks words that encourage you, words that inspire you, words that build you up. But when Satan speaks or whispers to you, he speaks lies, he speaks temptation, he speaks doom. We don't want it in Jesus' name. That's why last week when we talked, no, two weeks ago, we talked about the things that we led into our minds we talked about negative thoughts, ideas, suggestions, imaginations, dreams, and visions. He comes in these areas. We cannot give him a moment in our most expensive real estate, the mind. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's see the example of Christ very quickly here. We'll spend more time on Wednesday digging into all of this. When Jesus was tempted, what did he do? Amen? What did he do? He used the word. Please, what did he do? He used the word. Which word? His word. His own word. That's how he defeated the devil. You can't do it any other way. I thank God for my son who, is, who has a PhD and many other things and, and passed on the rest. Your education does not do anything for you here. Nothing. Forget it. You depend on the, the So when Jesus fasted for 40 days and was hungry, amen? And don't go beyond 40 days now. I know of a man whom I love dearly. He fasted for more than 40 days and died. Okay. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Amen? And the Bible says that the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That is incomprehensible. But that's what the Bible says. There are some things that are so hard to understand. And when they are difficult for me to understand, I say, God, someday I will know it. But that one where the devil led, I mean, the Holy Spirit led Jesus to be tempted by the devil. I don't understand that. 
Praise the name of Jesus. What did Jesus say? It is because he was saying, eat food. You are hungry. Eat. He says, it is written. Man shall not live on bread, a, eh? But on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Whose mouth is it? Jesus' mouth is the mouth of God. That's what you listen to. Not the devil. Don't give him, don't give him, don't give him a bit in your life. Don't. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Number two. The devil took Jesus on a high cliff. And said, hey, you jump. Just jump. You see your God, jump. Jesus says, it is. Do not put the Lord your God to test. Don't tempt the Lord our God. He is a tempter. He will come to tempt you. To do things that you should not do. Will you say amen? amen. Another example. Is when he showed him the fields. Can you imagine this, this fellow, the devil? How so stupid he is. He didn't create anything. He just said, look, look, at, look at the fields. Look at, look at everything. Just bow down and I'll give it to you. What? What did the devil create? Nothing. And yet he's telling the creator to bow to him for what he has created. Is that logical? Does that make sense to anybody? What did Jesus say? Away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. We are all called to worship God. We are all called to serve God. Don't serve man. Even though man may have 10 PhDs, I told you some time ago of a friend where I was teaching at the university. Um, he had a PhD. He called me and said, Dr. Ekan, I said, yeah. He said, I want to get a second PhD. I said, why, Massa? He said, look, if I have a second PhD, I'll be noted in the whole university as the only professor with two. I said, okay, go get it. I left that alone. But one thing that you must understand in this story is that Jesus used the word of God, his word, to defeat the enemy. So must we. He comes for a season and he comes back. So when you are tempted once, do not say he's gone. He doesn't give up. Don't you allow him. Will you say amen? amen. From Hebrews 4 verse 12, we want to glean four areas where the enemy attacks. He attacks you spiritually. And the number one thing that we discovered in all of scripture, where the enemy attacks, he attacks you to doubt, to doubt the word of God. That's number one. Doubt the word of God. If he has got you to doubt, he's finished you. The situation and the predicament that we are in today is because Adam and Eve doubted what God had. And from doubt... They accepted Satan's deceit, lies, and finally they died spiritually. That's why we're asking people to accept God. Amen? Receive God in your life and all of these things will be solved. So, when the devil brings doubt, you should use one of many scriptures. There are many among you here. You know them. Every time he throws doubt, tell him, my father, tell me what Jesus says. My father who has given them to me is what? Greater. Is what? Greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hands. Tell him that this is what Jesus told you to tell him. No doubt. I choose to believe. Believing is a choice. Nobody can choose for you. Will you say amen? amen? Look at, you are a stunted Christian. You've been for long, you cannot see any evidence of God's free in your life. When they come to do that to you, tell them, every time I accept the entrance of God's word, it brings light to me. It gives me understanding. It gives understanding to the simple. Will you say amen? amen. 
There are many, many ways that on Wednesday, come and bring your own example that the devil will tempt you spiritually. So we may have a vibrant conversation. Number two, he comes to your soul. He brings depression. One of his tricks. We remember the time when Nehemiah was used by God and his team to build the wall, to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that was broken. God set a record time of 52 days in rebuilding that wall. This was a feat that no one could understand. You could see the hand of God. Amen. And the people started, when they were about to dedicate it, they started weeping. He said, no, do not weep. The joy of the Lord should be your strength. Amen. So every time I feel depressed, I will say to myself, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I will say what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Every time I feel weak or down, I say, mm, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And dance the Bakosi dance. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When he comes to you and says, look, you are hopeless. You are mounting to nothing. Huh. You know what he tell him? The work that God has begun in me, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't use your words. Don't use your high language or your, your, your learning. High sounding nonsense. High sounding nonsense. Use the word of God. The Bible says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is what? Faithful. Every promise that God has given us, he keeps it. Not one of his promises will be let down. And so you tell him, look, the one who has begun good work in me, he will complete it. So, please, you do what you call self-talk. Talk, talk. You have to speak all. You have to do what? Speak. You don't, no, 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 speak. He hears and he runs. But he'll come again. When he comes again, speak. He hears, he runs. It's a battle. But you are on the victor's side. Amen. Greater is he who is in you ah. than he who is in the world. Amen. He will attack your mind. And we dealt, last two Sundays ago, we dealt with how we deal with the mind. When the enemy comes with his dirty, negative, toxic, Thoughts. What do you do? You reject them and you fill your mind with Philippians 4.8. Amen? Yes. Don't fill your mind with uh, testimonies. Don't fill your mind with the conversation. Don't fill your mind with what I'm telling you. Fill your mind with the word of, of God. And he will bring thoughts of unbelief in your mind. Tell him. Whoever believes in the Son, and I believe in the Son, has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. I no longer have the wrath of God in me. It has been borne by Christ on the cross. No shame, no wrath, no punishment. Because I did one thing, I accepted Christ. Finally, in that verse, the last thing is... Satan will attack your body. Amen? Amen? Do you know anybody who has been attacked here by Satan? The physical body. Oh, only one person. All right. Thank you. You have not seen people who have been attacked physically, right? Raise your hand if you have. Oh, okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here we go. Here we go. Now, Satan will attack you with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. But my Bible says in Proverbs, when the devil afflicts you with sickness, you allow the word of God to enter you. Amen. For they are life, for the word of God is what? Life to those who find them and health to part of their body. Are you listening? Oh, health only to their stomach when they eat. To your whole body. Come with verses. On Wednesday, 
I'll give you one which you should try. First Peter 2, 4. Amen? What does it say? By stripes, I am healed. Take the passage in Matthew 8, 17. You were healed by stripes. Take the passage in Isaiah 56. Or 53, sorry. Verse 6. And you get that. So, please come on Wednesday. Let us discuss. Amen. Here you cannot ask questions. There you will ask questions. And you will be accepted. What is the best news of all? Brethren, let me repeat this. Why am I so passionate about this book? Beyond all our books. I've studied 18 world religions. 18. None of them comes close to this book. This book, first and foremost, is inspired by the third person of the Trinity. If the third person inspired it, it is also God the Son and God the Father who inspired it. Are we okay? Yes. Do we agree? Yes. Number two. God, listen why this book is so different from every other book. Listen very carefully. He inspired 40 authors. How many authors? 40. On three continents. How many continents? Three. Using three languages. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Can you believe this? How long did it take? It took 1600 years to put this book together in the Council of Nicene. You tell me which book has been written by 40 authors. You tell me which book has one theme. You know the theme of the Bible? Redemption. That's the only theme. Say with me redemption. From Genesis 3.15 right to Revelations. Redemption. There's, you hear of many characters in the Bible. Let me tell you the mega super, 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 super star. He is called the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's who he is. And that Lord Jesus Christ, you see the word Lord in God? Jesus, Savior, Christ, the anointed one. What's the best use of all? Please, a message like this does not go without you and I. You and I applying it. It will be useless to hear this message and go away. So I plead with you. Read this book daily. Meditate on this book daily. When you meditate, you meditate like a, cow, like a camel. When a camel eats grass, it puts it in a, in a um, sack storage and brings it back to regurgitate don't only read don't only meditate memorize it and speak it will you say amen with me amen. whoever gives thought to the word will discover good and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord will you say amen, amen. would you stand please We are done. Hallelujah. Father, we are grateful that you taught us. Now help us to be sharp weapons in your hand as we combat the enemy and defeat him because we are designed to be more than conquerors. Receive it. Be blessed in Jesus' name.